how and why allowing President Biden and the Democrat elite uh, to remain in power will result in the further erosion of our freedom and the loss of, of what we know and love about America. Uh, we've seen such an, a brazen abuse of power uh, coming from this administration, weaponizing the Department of Justice, undermining the rule of law, interfering with our democracy, trying to limit who we are able to vote for in this election. There are so many different examples at this point. Tulsi Gabbard pulls no punches as she dissects the Biden administration's failures and the dangerous trajectory of America under Democrat leadership. In this powerful message, Tulsi exposes the abuse of power, the weaponization of institutions like the Department of Justice, and the erosion of freedoms that define our nation. With every policy decision, she argues, we inch closer to losing the America we know and love. Tulsi doesn't stop there. Her critique of Vice President Kamala Harris is blistering, questioning her leadership and highlighting the failures of her key assignments. But Tulsi also points to a deeper cultural issue, fear. Fear-driven policies and leaders who bow to woke activists are pushing America further from the principles that made it strong. Gabbard calls for a return to leadership grounded in courage, truth, and unwavering commitment to individual freedoms. She challenges Americans to wake up, speak out, and take action before it's too late. Can America reclaim its values? Or will fear and radicalism define our future? Tulsi delivers a message of urgency, clarity, and hope. Don't miss it. We have to be very clear-eyed about what we're facing. And between, if you compare the record of President Biden and President Trump on key issues that are directly uh, impacting us in America today, um, there, there's not much like gray area where there's overlap between the two of them. When you look at issues like border security, um, if you look at, um, uh, our education system as a whole, if you look at our economy, if you look at what's happening on the foreign policy front, there are clear distinctions between the record of Joe Biden and Donald Trump. And so that's where in my book, I encourage people to uh, be very clear eyed about the consequences of many of these policies that are, um, you know, that are undermining our security, our freedom and the rule of law in our country uh, and make a decision accordingly. He is, surround, he is surrounded by people who are alumni of uh, President Obama's administration and alumni of uh, Hillary Clinton from when she was Secretary of State and obviously her campaign. Uh, he is claiming and, and his, his um, record is, is being touted as, as quote unquote, the most progressive presidency in our country's history. You know, there, there are clearly uh, some cognitive challenges that, that Joe Biden puts on display. Um, but I refuse to remove responsibility from him uh, because he is, he is the president of the United States. The man I see on television is not the same person that I knew and spoke to and spent time with in 2020 or the years prior to that. Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama are not in office right now, but they still continue to wield immense power in influencing the decisions that are being made. It's not a, a leap of, of imagination to know that that's true when you look at the people who are in Joe Biden's administration. They are the, the, the people who were the right hands for the Obama administration, for President Obama and for, for Hillary Clinton. Uh, when Hillary Clinton said herself the other day, she said, oh yeah, I talk to the White House every day. So it's not, it is no shock or surprise uh, who the influences are behind the policies that are coming out of this White House that many people say is the most radical and woke White House that our country oh. has ever seen. Oh. It was kind of laid out for me when I first got there, uh, but I, I never second guessed my decision, um, my decisions about these different positions that I took um, I never regretted them, uh, never, not to this day, and I never will, because I didn't go to Washington to be loved by the people who live and exist and thrive in that bubble. It is the assumed norm. It's not the exception. What they're doing is the norm. So why would they talk about it? 
there's nothing to talk about yeah. because they assume that every member of Congress, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, the day you walk out, you get your payday. She is, um, for a few reasons, uh, She, I find her to be wholly unprepared and incapable of doing the job. I have zero trust and confidence in her ability to lead our country. I have zero confidence in her ability to be the vice president. She's not delivered in any of the areas that she has been tasked with, foremost among them, border security, because she and people like her uh, will feel the need to prove her strength. And, and our lives are worth more than some politician who's trying to act strong and look like they can handle tough decisions. People in leadership positions who operate from a place of fear rather than uh, a place of strength that is grounded in the founding principles of our country and the examples that have been set forward by people like Martin Luther King. And they're so afraid of being labeled by the fringe activists, the so-called woke uh, activists within the Democratic Party that, and especially over these last few years, especially since 2016, when, you know, it wasn't called it back then, but this whole Trump derangement syndrome caused otherwise, um, you know, sensible, thoughtful people to just throw reason out the window uh, as a reaction, I think, to, to Trump. Um, and so we, we are, we are where we are. Uh, and it is, I hope that more and more Americans are seeing this for what it is and how, um, even those with good intentions, well, let's, you know, we should be kind and you know, everyone should be able to live their lives, which I agree with everyone, mm. every, every adult in a free country should be a, allowed to live their lives in the way that they choose whether i like it or not go live your life you may not like the choices i make in my life that's my business not your business i unfortunately i have been through so much of this for so long that it just doesn't m surprise me anymore because these are people who who literally have allowed themselves to go insane or even if they are still still clear-headed people they are so terrified of of being excoriated and criticized and smeared and attacked like I have been by the Democratic mm. Party that they're more than happy to just like uh, remain silent if nothing else or just you know give the hey uh, thumbs up even though they know in their heart that this is not this is not good it's not good for our country it's not good for our society we are not actually making progress as a country